So a few months ago, I made a video about native email clients on Linux. And my basic question in that video was, where were all the good ones? And my conclusion was that there weren't really any good ones, but that Neomut seemed to be the one that I was kind of leaning towards as being my daily driver. It's the one that I used the most often, and it was good enough for what I really needed it to do. Since then, I've been back and forth between using Neomut and using things like Thunderbird and a couple other ones. And I've reached my limit. I've reached the point where I cannot stomach native email clients on Linux anymore. They're all just universally bad when it comes to something. Now, that doesn't mean they're overall, like, really, really bad, like, horrible, crashy pieces of software. That's not true. But they all have peculiarities or things that are just not good about them. So, for example, Thunderbird. Thunderbird is made by Mozilla, and... You would think because they make a browser that they would at least be able to make a functioning email client, but not really. So while Thunderbird works and it works just fine, it also takes up an ungodly amount of memory. Now, normally I'm not a big teetotaler when it comes to system resources. Like, I will happily use as many as I possibly can. I have 64 gigabytes of memory and I have a fast processor and a fairly decent graphics card, so use them. They're there to be used. But when a email client, which is just sitting there in the background, not doing anything other than perhaps running a get email command every 15 minutes or something, takes up seven or eight gigabytes of memory, there's obviously something wrong. And I don't like it. Like, I don't want my email client to take up that much in resources. A couple gigabytes, fine, whatever. Still seems to be a little bit overkill, but Seven or eight? No. Obviously, there's a bug there somewhere. I don't know why I went all pirate there. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it just... Obviously, something is wrong in that situation. So, you probably are asking, well, Matt, why don't you just stick with Neomut? Well, the thing is, is that Neomut, despite how amazing it is and how much it appeals to the nerd in me, it's not usable with the way email works in today's time frame. Every email that you get has HTML in it, and they all have pictures and all this stuff, and while there are workarounds to view that kind of stuff in MUT, it's not great. It still gives you a lot of stuff that you have to click on a link in order to go see, and I don't want to have to click on a link in my email, ever, unless I absolutely have to, especially not to view something to be like an image or something. I don't want to have to do that. So. Mutt was a really good option for email when everything was text-based. Now it's not so much a solution that you can get by with if you get a lot of email that is formatted in HTML. And unfortunately, these days, almost everything is. So the other things that I had to consider were that there are other options. So there are things like MailSpring, there are things like Clausmail and Evolution and Geary. Every single one of them have issues that just make it almost impossible for me to use them. So, things like Evolution does not work well without the GNOME keyring. It won't work with any other keyring as far as I can be sure. And that means that I almost have to install GNOME keyring and then there's conflicts between GNOME keyring and any other keyring that I happen to have installed. It's not a great situation, so Evolution is off the board. Geary is just a little bit too simplistic for my taste and is entirely too dependent on GTK stuff. So if I'm not using GNOME, it doesn't really look all that great. It looks fine, but it's still you can tell that there's things mis missing. And on top of that, it doesn't really work all that great with Gmail, so I couldn't use that either. And then there was just probably a half a dozen other ones that I've tried over the last two or three years. And none of them really were able to be the application that I need them to be. So I get hundreds of emails every day between the stuff I do for work, for the channel, things like that. I just get a ton of email. And I'm one of those guys, I don't want to leave it all in my inbox. So I almost constantly move the messages that I get where they need to go. So I'm always doing email stuff. And that is why I have my email clients sitting in the background all the time. So... 
I need a application that runs really well, does the things that I need to do, and doesn't just hog every system resource the longer it runs. I'm looking at through Thunderbird. And it just doesn't appear that there is one. So this is kind of a follow-up video to that video I did a few months ago where I was talking about the lack of good email clients. I'm just done with it. I'm at the point now where I'm just going to use the Gmail interface in a Firefox tab and just call that my email experience. It's not what I want to do. I prefer a native email experience, especially when I want to download some of my email to my computer and have kind of like a local backup of that kind of stuff. But like I said, there's just not an email client that doesn't have a fatal flaw. And I, you know, I, I don't expect perfection. I, I really don't. Like if Thunderbird didn't have this major memory leak, I would probably just use Thunderbird because it does provide everything that I need to do. The UI isn't too offensive. It has theming capabilities. It works pretty well, but it has this major memory leak and it drives me bonkers. So, for example, I left it running for my computer usually runs for two days before I do a reboot or a shutdown. And I left Thunderbird running for those two days and at the end of the two days, it was using nine gigabytes of RAM. And that's not just a one-time thing. It was seven or eight at one point. Right now, it is at four, and I've only had my computer up now for like 16 hours. So, like, I, I, that's not okay, okay? It's just it's just not. And the thing is, is, it's not that surprising. So Firefox had a memory leak ages and ages ago where it would just take gobs and gobs of system RAM and it would continue eating system RAM, RAM until it ran out. They did eventually fix that, but now now Firefox is doing something even more stupid where they just keep spawning more and more processes, more and more threads on your computer. So earlier today, I counted them using BTOP. Firefox was using over 300 threads on my computer. Which, I mean, that seems like a lot, right? Especially, I mean, it's not like I have 300 tabs open, because I don't. I have maybe 40 tabs open, which is still a lot, but it's not 300, so I don't understand what's... That wasn't the point of the video. I'm just, I'm in a very ranty mood today, very anti-Mozilla, because I keep finding these problems with their, their software, and just, like, what is going on there? Why are you so greedy when it comes to memory? Fix this stuff. It shouldn't be that hard to do so at the end of the day i think i've found the thing that i'm most disappointed in when it comes to linux and the software available to it the lack of good email clients is the most disappointing thing for me because like i said i want to use native email and i just can't because there's not any good clients and despite looking for them over the last few months since i made that last video i haven't found a good one so if you know of a good email client that I maybe haven't tried, leave that in the comments section below. You can leave any other comments you have down there as well. I love our conversations down there. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description just below the like button. You can hit the like button and really seriously help out the channel, so please do so. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. If you want to support me for a year in advance, you can save 10%. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all amazing people, and the channel just would not be what it is without you guys and your support. So thank you so very much. Thanks to everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.